Hello, fellow audio nerds. I'm Steph, and this is Major High Five. This past weekend, I went to my friend's show, and when we got out, the temperature had completely dropped. I wasn't wearing a jacket, and I had the thought to myself, yep, it's the fall season again, and I really hope I don't get sick. When I get sick, the most annoying symptom is that my ears get super clogged, and it's really hard to hear. That sort of <laughs> made me think again just how lucky I feel that I don't have that much hearing damage. Noise-induced hearing damage is something that we all deal with over the course of a lifetime. It will happen to us all. And that's why this week I want to take a closer look at hearing damage. What causes it? And, you know, how we might put off that process. How we might prevent it. So let's get into it. What's the deal with hearing damage? In order to understand what happens when we experience noise-induced hearing damage, first we need to understand how we hear in general. First, sound waves enter the ear canal, hit the eardrum, which vibrates. These vibrations travel to three tiny bones in the middle ear, which in turn kind of ripple and vibrate fluid inside the cochlea. The cochlea has an elastic partition called the basilar membrane, and little hairs sit on the basilar membrane. So when the fluid vibrates, sort of a wave forms on the, on the membrane and moves the little hairs on it. So on these little hairs, there's something called stereocilia, and these are sort of smaller hair-like structures that when the hair, hairs move, the very tips of those stereocilia open up. This lets chemicals kind of flood in and that creates an electrical signal. The electrical signal then travels to the brain via the auditory nerve and then you hear beautiful music. So what happens when hearing is damaged from noise? For the majority of people, hearing damage from noise happens very gradually over a long period of time, being exposed to loudish sounds. When this type of hearing damage happens, it's usually because of damage to the little hairs inside the cochlea. And the problem is that when these hair cells get damaged and die, they don't grow back, which is why it's so important that we kind of try and prevent this, because when that hearing damage happens, it's permanent. And it's not, it's, it happens so gradually that we don't even notice it, 30% to 50% of those hair cells can die, and you can't even measure that on a, a hearing test. So serious irreparable damage has to happen before you even really notice it, but by then it's too late. Other times, hearing damage can happen instantaneously, like a big loud gunshot or a firecracker or something along those lines, something really loud and transient. When that kind of hearing da damage happens, a lot of times it's damage to the auditory nerve, actually. But in a really general sense, the majority of us will experience hearing damage from just prolonged exposure to loud noises. So, okay, what does loud mean in that case? There's sort of a helpful chart that I'll put up right here so that you can sort of get an, get an idea of how loud different environments or sounds are and then how long you can be exposed to those types of sounds before hearing damage starts to occur. So how do we prevent hearing damage? In the case of noise-induced hearing damage, knowledge is power. If you know how long you can be in an environment before you start getting damage to your ears, then you can sort of try to avoid being in those situations in the first place, or just be able to protect yourself when you know that you will be in those kinds of situations. For example, even just like the cheap foam earplugs that you get at the corner store or the, the pharmacy or whatever can really, really help protect your ears when you're in a kind of loud environment. Or say, for example, you're the type of person where you love loud music. You love listening to your headphones on 11, and you just love that. It feels good to you. In that case, I would say, try and figure out how loud you're really listening. And would you compare it to like a rock concert, for example? If so, you can turn it up. 
but don't do it for too long. You know, figure out what the sort of sort of threshold is before the hearing damage happens. Listen at that loud volume then, and then turn it back down to help protect your ears. You can still get, you know, the feelings that you want to get from it. You know, just so long as you're aware of your own body and how you can protect it. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. It's my goal to make earplugs cool <laughs> because, you know, I am always carrying earplugs with me around the city when I go to bars, when I go to shows, and I'll even bring a handful of them with me for my friends if they want them. And, you know, it's so much more comfortable to be at a concert and have earplugs in, to me at least. But do the same for yourself, do the same for your friends, and just, you know, protect yourself, love yourself. Those ears, they're precious. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Alright everybody, I will see you next time. Bye.